What's going on, everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So Bungie has been hit with layoffs. Um, it's unclear the amount, um, but this report says dozens. Now, dozens could be do dozens is just in intervals of 12. So, I mean, that could be 24. It says dozens. So the least amount it could be is probably like 24, maybe higher than that. We don't know uh, the severity of the layoffs. Um, now, listen, I don't want to be a cold hearted bastard, right? I don't want to be that guy, but I, but I, I do think I'm, I'm, I'm cynical, but I'm realistic. I don't think most people care when people get laid off, right? Um, and there's been a lot of layoffs this year. There's, there's been a, it's been an amazing year for gaming that layoffs don't change that. Like two things can be true at once. People getting laid off sucks. And this is the most, this is one of the greatest years in gaming ever. It's kind of no, it, it's kind of similar to listen, the pandemic was a terrible time because a lot of people got sick and died. But the pandemic was kind of lit for a lot of people. I'm just keeping it real. A lot of people feel that way. There were a lot of like positive and beneficial things. That came out of COVID and the pandemic. I mean, th that's just fact, right? Once again, things are not mutually exclusive. Two things can be true at once. So I just think like when people say, oh, man, you know, layoffs suck. I feel for those guys. I feel so. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just something with me, but I have a hard time believing those people really. It's kind of like not to get dark and morbid, but when a tragedy happens, and you see, uh, you know, Twitter, oh, thoughts and prayers. You know them, them thoughts and they, they say thoughts and prayers and then they go on about their day and don't really do anything about it. Don't really care. It, it's kind of like I guess there's levels to caring about things. And when people say they care about developers, gaming developers getting laid off, I think they care. At the, I, th I think they care to the bare minimum. I don't think like they're 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 really hurting or they're really bothered by this stuff. It's the bare minimum type of caring. It's the, the low tier type of caring. Like I said, it's the same thing when something horrible happens and we learn about it. Oh, thoughts and prayers. People move on about their day and they don't really mean much by thoughts and prayers. That's how I really think people feel. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I think maybe I'm the pessimist. I'm the, you know, I'm skeptical. I'm, I'm, I'm all of that about these type of things. Um, and maybe I'm projecting because I'm once again, I'm a cold hearted bastard. I, tr I don't think I am, but maybe maybe I am. And I'm projecting that's how most people feel. And maybe most people don't feel like that. Who knows? But that's what I think. Of course, you know, I don't wish layoffs on anybody. And by the way, I'm, I'm somebody who's been laid off before. So I'm not and I've never told nobody that because I don't most of the things that happen in my life, I don't cry about it when it happens. I do something about it. So when I got laid off. Right. And granted, I did have like they did kind of give us like, hey, a three month warning. It was like two months warning. You you know, this team possibly could be laid off and I didn't cry about it. I'm, I'm like, OK, cool. I'm gonna start looking. And with my resume and I was very confident in my in my resume that I built up over a, you know, like a decade. Um, I I didn't have any doubt that I was going to be able to find something, um, something else pretty soon. And yeah, I live in a place where a, a city and in the area, uh, tri-state area where jobs are in abundance, um, and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I knew my resume was going to go to work and I found, I literally found a new job before, um, before I even, before the layoff even came. Um, so I was laid off, but I found a new job before that. So I, listen, I'm just somebody who does something about the problems. I'm a problem solver. I don't linger on the problem and cry about it. I go straight into, okay, solution time. So that's just me. Um, but getting into getting back to this, uh, some of the stuff they say in the, in the article and did not clarify the scope of the layoffs. Dozens of ex Bungie employees have since posted on social media, like uh, social media, just call it Twitter, bro. And LinkedIn to share the news that they have been laid off by the impact. The layoffs appear to be spread across Bungie. So here's the interesting part. Um, the layoffs appear to be spread across Bungie's community and social teams, marketing, legal, recruiting, art, 
human resources, quality assurance, and elsewhere. To me, not that this makes it any better, but it seems like they laid off any non-essential staff that wasn't absolutely needed for the development of video games. So Final Shape uh, has been delayed from February 2024 to June 2024, and Marathon, that's supposed to be their new uh, extraction shooter games as a service, has been delayed from 2024 to 2025. Now, a lot of people still ask me, you know, with all the news, um, do I still support the games as a service initiative and effort? And my answer is absolute yet, absolutely yes. That's not changing. I'm telling you, nothing is going to change my, 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 uh, my support and my position on games as a service. Once again, because I've said this before, not because I'm pro games as a service, I'm pro multiplayer. And the only way to get multiplayer games nowadays is through games as a service because, because that's the, the de facto model. They are not making multiplayer games that are not games as a service. That's the only way to get them now. So my no, my support will never change for that. There's yes, they're going going through growing, growing pains and a lot of issues. I'm gonna be real. I don't care. Figure it out. Figure it out. Listen, I've seen that. I've seen developers and studios all all the different. Not only PlayStation navigate navigate through harder and more, and more challenging things. So that's why I'm just I just refuse to believe that this is the this is the challenge that they can't figure out, given how talented. They, they claim they are, the industry claims they, they are, all you fans claim they are. Listen, if, if they that talented, they'll figure it out. I think they'll, they've done, I think they've made harder pivots um, in, in, uh, before and in history. And I think this is, this is a pivot that's definitely a challenge. But like I said, I don't care. Figure it out. That's their job to figure out, okay, how do, how do we do this? It might be their job to figure out Okay, do we need to, uh, you know, lessen the, the scope of these games as a service? What, you know, do we need better, per, you know, better staff? Whatever it is, that's not my job to figure out. I'm the consumer. I just want the product. So figure it out. That, uh, do I also still want the single player games? Of course, but no. My, my stance on games as a service multiplayer will never change. I want them. So that's, that's, that's never going to change. Am I interested in Marathon specifically? No, because I haven't been, really been shown anything. So I have no idea what to think about Marathon. I'm like completely indifferent to it. Um, and being that it's Bungie and I didn't like Destiny, you know, that's kind of why like I got to, it's like very much wait and see, but I'm not necessarily looking forward to Marathon itself. So that's my stance on games as a service still. Now the issue is this. So when Sony purchased Bungie, they spent like an extra billion dollars to retain, uh, retain the developers and the, and the employees. Um, and then Bungie leadership assured their employees that the Sony deal will not result in layoffs or restructuring. Now, here's the thing, right? So Bungie leadership assured their employees. Did Sony tell Bungie that? Did, did Sony tell... Uh, give Bungie that assurance because if they did that's effed up and y'all lied to them even though because that, that's never that should never be a promise like you as a corporation should make that you should assure or promise um a, a, some uh, an entity you're acquiring oh guaranteed no layoffs like uh, that that feels pretty reckless to actually assure assure a team of I'm just curious as to how that went if Bungie actually got that type of assurance from Sony. But to have that type of confidence to tell your employees that you had to, I assume you had to get it from somewhere. I would, I would assume that. And it seems they got rid of, like I said, non-essential staff that wasn't absolutely needed to, uh, to develop a game. Because obviously, like I've seen posts from like the, the, uh, the, the, man, the, uh, the community manager. She, uh, she got laid off. Uh, so marketing, legal, recruiting, um, art, art seems to, could, seems to be related to development, but that's kind of vague. Human resources, quali quality assurance, those are like testers. So th this seems to be people out, a lot of people outside of the actual development team, maybe outside of the, uh, except for maybe the art team. I don't know 
I don't know exactly what that entails. But yeah, it seems to be non-development team. Not that that makes it any better. Not that your statement here, you know, uh, your statement here doesn't say except for certain teams or people in certain positions. It just says will not result in, in any, any layoffs or restructuring at all. It sucks. Like I said, I've been through it. I'm not, I'm not somebody just that's just cold and talking about something I've never experienced it. Like I said, I experienced it, and I just moved on and did something about it. Um, but the industry as a whole, like I said, is definitely going through some layoffs. PlayStation had layoffs, uh, a, a bunch of layoffs earlier this year um, to, uh, to the visual arts team. So they had layoffs earlier this year to the visual arts team, and they had more layoffs to the visual arts team recently. And now Bungie, and I think, and you know, they closed Pixel, they closed Pixel Opus, and it was, I think, might have been one other layoff this, this year. So, and everybody's been doing them. Um, and there's going to be more to come from, I think there's definitely going to be more to come from PlayStation. Anytime there's t- any type of like acquisition, um, merging or anything like that, there's going to be layoffs. So it sucks, especially since there's been a lot of uh, like negative, uh, a negative aura and negative news uh, regarding Sony. A lot of it is unverified and not, you know, it's not confirmed. Um, some things just floating out there, but nevertheless, it's still bad news, even if it's like unrelated to anything. Because I'm not one of these people who's, you know, connecting this to something else. I don't know. Like I said, for me, I just need more evidence and I'm not, I don't like just randomly making connections to certain things happening. Certain things I think are isolated and, and might be hap- happening in a silo. And the big problem, the big issue with, you know, the news and the rumors and all that stuff and all this stuff that's unconfirmed and unverified um, is one, Sony won't make a statement. PlayStation will not comment on a lot of this stuff. They need to start talking. I mean, because listen, and I'm not saying I want any of the, I don't want like a face for PlayStation, like an executive face that comes out and speaks and all that stuff, sits on everybody's couches and does interviews. It's not what I'm saying I, I want, but they need to make statements on some of the, the rumors and things that are out there. Because if you don't, the narrative, it will be created for you. And the narrative is, can be very negative. So people are going to craft their own truth and that then that's going to start getting passed around. So they need to start speaking a little bit more. And then on top of that, you have on social media, you have rabid fan accounts that are not insiders because there are no actual PlayStation insiders. If you look at the history of the last like three years, they've been wrong about everything. Only actual news sites like V, you can trust like VGC and Insider Gaming. All the stuff they report regarding PlayStation, especially Insider Gaming, they've been right about. But all these other dudes on social media, they're engagement hustlers. So what they do is they post up a random rumor on Twitter that is going to get PlayStation fans either hype or upset. Because either one, um, e- either one produces engagement, so they don't care. And this stuff is com- this stuff has absolutely no source. All they are is just rabid PlayStation fanboy accounts. And there's absolutely no source. The source is some random dude, some random ghost in West Bubblefuck that nobody knows about. And you have these fringe, no no name news sites that pick that pick up on um that that pick up on some of these stories and report it. But nobody legitimate is taking it serious. Nobody, none of the legitimate websites are, are reporting it. I'm telling you, brother, bro, these, these engagement hustlers on social media are an issue. They report everything. It don't matter. It could have came from their fucking grandmother. And they're going to, and they're going to just put it out there. Just no source. Oh, Sony is working with this. And this happened. At so where's your source, bro? Like, we're at the we're at a place where people are just willing to accept any type. Are y'all that desperate and bad? Are y'all willing to accept anything without a rumor? I mean, without a source. Now, when I see something out there, like I try to go piece piece it together, right? See who see who the source is. Um, see if anybody else is re- reporting it. 
just see where it stemmed from. Like, I would I would like to say I do a little bit. I'm not a journalist, but I do a little bit of journalistic invest investigation. These dudes just be seeing something on Twitter. Oh, word? Truth. Source. I made it up. Never happened. Fiction. Like, bro, y'all got to stop this nonsense. That, that's Sony needs to speak. So they can sh so all all the all these engagement farmers on Twitter can lose their engagement job and be shut down because they are the worst. They are just propagating uh, more uh, unverified um, rumors, shit that's completely false, whether it be positive or negative. I'm talking about either either way. Either way, I don't like all this false shit out there. It's it's crazy what they're doing. So Sony needs to speak up, bro. Um, and make more statements. So literally, as I recorded, rendered, and was uploading this video to YouTube, I go on Twitter and see an update, uh, new information regarding the bungee layoffs. So I'm not gonna edit anything I, I've already said. I'm just gonna stitch this in towards the end. Um, so this co comes from Paul Tassie. So it says the layoff decision came directly from Bungie management and leadership, not Sony. This is not about Sony replacing Bungie employees with their own people, many em employee benefits, uh, not health insurance, only last until the end of the month if you're let go. Laying people off on the 30th means a single additional day of coverage. Many employees had unvested shares as a result of the Sony purchase. These shares would be received based on staying with the company for a certain number of years following the sale. But those shares revert to Bungie if you leave even if you're fired, which is what happens, uh, which is what is happening now to many of those um, who have been affected. So I'm not the most educated when it comes to like, you know, vested shares and unvested shares. Cause my wife is literally in HR, so she's on the phone. She's a professional, like an expert at this type of stuff. Um, she's like a lead HR um, person. And so I hear her on the phone talk to uh, people. She's like recruiting and stuff like that. Um, about vested shares in in the company and all and all that stuff. So I understand that you get a, like a big payout after being with the company. Um, and I think it depends on what what the contract is. If the company gets purchased, you then may get a big payout from your vested shares. But it it, it all depends on the, the company, I guess. Like I said, I'm not the most educated of it, but I know from reading this those employees who are getting laid off and fired are losing out on a lot um, based on my understanding. So yeah, just wanted to include this little addition. I don't think there's any more information other than that. So yeah, let me know what y'all think about it. I'll catch y'all on the next video. Uh, follow me on Twitter, uh, hit the notification bell, hit the like button, all that good stuff. And I'll catch y'all later. Peace.